Should you see Avengers Endgame in IMAX? What about Dolby Cinema? Or RPX? Or some of the other formats out there? Is it worth paying the price of admission for an IMAX viewing of Endgame? All of these and more answered, coming up. Hi, I'm Isaac and this is Movie University. On this channel, I do educational videos like this one, so if you like what you see today, consider subscribing. It's been two years since I released my explanation of IMAX. In that time, a plethora of movies have been released and new technologies have come out for the general public, at home and in cinemas. Let's go over three questions I keep getting about seeing Avengers Endgame. Number one, YouTube user S. Mephelia asked if Avengers Endgame is shot with digital IMAX cameras. Yes, Endgame and Infinity War were both entirely shot on the recently created Airy Alexa 65 IMAX approved digital camera and not on the traditional IMAX film. This is confirmed in multiple IMAX corporations and Aerie Alexa press releases and in-person interviews. Links to those are below in the description. Number two, why did the directors choose digital IMAX cameras versus traditional IMAX film cameras? Simply put, the older film IMAX cameras are hard to work with. Christopher Nolan is well known to use traditional IMAX technology. The picture is absolutely gorgeous with unparalleled resolution at around 18,000 lines of resolution on a real IMAX screen. However, with that level of detail comes problems. IMAX film cameras weigh around 240 pounds. With that kind of weight comes the need for special supports and rigging to move the cameras around. A typical camera used on a Hollywood set weighs less than 50 pounds. The next problem is that the film reels from Kodak itself are so large the cameras can only hold about three minutes worth of film and then production crews need around 20 minutes to reload the camera. The incredible detail available with a film size this large means that everything about the shot must be perfect, and each image must be stunning. The audience sees every flaw, and a lackluster image totally wastes the potential of the IMAX medium. On the other hand, Aries cameras are digital, which means they don't require a crew to reload the video with the footage being stored on a hard drive. Another problem with IMAX film is the camera noise. This often leads to actors having to come to the studio in post-production to dub their own lines. IMAX film offers less color mapping, has more grain, and offers less tonal curve, and is less flexible with CGI. So with all those problems, why even use IMAX film? In short, having a larger film frame with higher resolution allows you to capture a higher quality image. So despite the inherent disadvantage of shooting in IMAX, you end up with a much crisper looking image that has a classic feel to it, therefore future-proofing your image for decades to come. Number three, so what about seeing Avengers Endgame in Dolby Cinemas? I got asked this by a couple of YouTube users. So here's the deal. I personally prefer Dolby Cinemas over IMAX, hands down. I think Dolby Cinemas are better, cleaner, comfier, and offer better sound. Not to mention every movie I've seen in IMAX has the volume pumped up way too high. If you want to see my explanation of what Dolby Cinemas is, check out my video on it in the description below. For Avengers Endgame though, I'm going to recommend IMAX. The reason is, whether you see it in a real IMAX or a LIMAX, IMAX has always touted a different size screen. What makes IMAX screens unique is the taller size of them. Even the fake IMAX screens are taller than compared to a traditional theater. In my opinion, if you see Avengers, at a Dolby Cinema, you're going to get a better sound mix because of that Dolby Atmos surround mix. If you see Endgame in IMAX, you're going to sacrifice some sound, but you're going to see more of the movie. Let's say for the sake of argument that Dolby, Regal, Cinemark, or whoever else has built their screens the same size as IMAX. You don't really think IMAX is going to allow distribution of that same movie to those chains, do you? What would be the point of seeing see it in IMAX then? Why would you give your competition the same edge that you have? Is it worth paying a higher price of admission to see 26% more footage? I think for this movie, yes. We've been waiting a decade for this epic conclusion to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To see the movie as the directors intended you to see it, I think it's worth it. Adding 26% more footage to the screen can give a whole new dynamic to some scenes, particularly action scenes, or those sweeping epic shots on cranes as they go zooming by very large landscapes. 
Be sure to tell me the format you plan on seeing Avengers Endgame in in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe on your way out. I'm Isaac, and this is Movie University.